Yer, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another New York Giants update video. And real quick before I get started, I'd like to say thank you to all my viewers and all my subscribers. Welcome all new people. And first of all, I apologize for the noise. There's nothing I can do about that. My neighbors are doing like some type of construction and my neighbors are already annoying on the regular. So this is just like super annoying. But thank you to all you guys. Over the past like month or so, there's been an influx of a lot of subscribers from my channel. So I just want to tell you guys thank you. I hit 500 recently. That is not something I expected. And then within like the span of three days of hitting 500, now I'm already at like 580. So, you know, the channel's growing at a nice rate. Thank you guys. So this morning, the Giants, um, we cut veteran safety Antoine Bethea from the team. Uh, Antoine Bethea was somebody that Honestly, a lot of Giants fans expected to be cut as soon as free agency began. You know, it was him, Alec Ogletree, Kareem Martin, and maybe Rhett Elson. I was always, you know, I was never for cutting Rhett Elson. I was one to try and restructure his contract and keep him on the team. But Rhett retired. They did cut Kareem. They did cut Alec Ogletree. And they took a while to cut Bethea. I don't know if they were, like, debating whether or not to keep him on or something. Because he was a good presence in the locker room. This is something that's been documented. Uh, the young safeties and Jabil Peppers and uh, Julian Love and even the younger defensive backs, they all have nothing but good things to say about him. Other teammates have nothing but good things to say about him. He was a great locker room presence, a great leader in there. It's just that he was a terrible player on the field, you know I mean? And you can't really do anything about that. Nobody could beat father time. It's just that Bethea got old and he couldn't do what he once could beforehand, you know, in Arizona. Just the year before we signed him, he was still performing at a high level, but it seemed that time finally caught up with him when he signed with the Giants and he kind of just dropped off, you know? And it's kind of weird because he did lead the team in tackles, I believe, with 110 tackles where he was playing free safety for the entire season. But once again, not much of an impact made. Uh, you could tell whenever he was on the field that it just seemed like we, if we could put anybody else there, it would have been better. They would have done a better job. Wasn't great in coverage, you know? It's just that he was... He was a bad free safety, to put it quite bluntly. But Bethea, like, it took a while to cut him. I'm guessing it's because of that locker room presence. It's because we needed a veteran back there to help those young guys develop. I mean, everybody in the defensive back room, prior to signing James Bradbury, right? If you exclude Antoine Bethea, everybody in the defensive back uh, locker room are still on their rookie contracts. These are still very young guys. The main ones who, are, who as of right now, seem to be plan to be the centerpiece of the Giants defense the main ones are just entering their second year so you definitely need a veteran presence back there you definitely need somebody who's a high experience somebody who knows the ins and out of the league somebody to help these guys mature you definitely need that back there and when they got James Bradbury I'm guessing the Giants got a bit more comfortable with the idea of letting Bethea go because he wasn't even making that much money you know the cap hit that we're taking or I mean the cap that we're gaining is only like around 2.75 million dollars at least according to NewYorkPost.com. And this is another thing that's a bit confusing I'm going to get into later, just the remaining cap space of the Giants. But the cap hit and, you know, what we're getting, it's not even that much. It's it's minimal money when you put it in the grander scheme of things of the NFL, uh, you know, total cap and whatnot. So that definitely plays into why it took a little while for the Giants to let him go. But now that he is gone, uh, I'm expecting Jabril Peppers and... Julian Love to be our starting safeties next year, barring the Giants taking a safety, you know, in the first two mid rounds of the draft uh, this come April, you know, this April. So barring that happening, Jabril Peppers and Julian Love are for sure going to be our starting safeties. You know, I mean, anything happened from then on out, but it should be those guys. And Julian Love performed fairly well at free safety when he came in towards the end of the season. I mean, strong safety, he came in towards the end of the season and he practiced a lot in the offseason last year before he started his first NFL game as a free safety. He's a very versatile player. I still think he's best suited at slot cornerback, which is, you know, a need for the Giants right now. Sam Beal is not cutting it. I do not believe Sam Beal will cut it. Uh, Grant Haley was great for us in 2018. A very David Mayo-esque player in the fact that he's really a good backup and can have good games where he starts, but not consistently good games. And the only other person I see sliding in there would be Julian Love, a slot cornerback who played slot corner in college and 
I feel like you'd just be, you know, filling in a hole there and yeah, you'd still have a hole at free safety, but that was already there. So at least you fill in one without bringing in a new guy to the team. Uh, we'll see what happens though. And getting into that confusing cap space thing, like right here on the post, for example, it says the Giants entered free agency with about $73 million under the cap. And they spent about $63 million with the contracts of Blake Martinez, uh, James Bradbury, Kyler Fackrell, uh, the tight end from 49ers and franchise tagging Leonard Williams. But if you go to overthecap.com, which like 99.9% .9 of the times has never failed me, like almost always right, it's the website that breaks down everybody's contract on every team and you know calculates the team cap space, it calculates the liabilities, the dead cap money and everything. Like I really trust this website. According to overthecap.com, we have $19.2 million of cap space left. While if you go by what the post says, the post said we entered with 73 million, we spent 63 million, we'd have around 10 million left. So there's definitely a discrepancy there. I'm gonna go with overthecap.com for now, just because you know I trust them more. They're, they're like a website that's been doing this for years and years and they've never really been wrong. And if we go by that, the Giants have 19.2 mil left. Subtract 13 million from that, because that's what the draft expenses are gonna be. And then, I mean, what, you have like $6 million left that you could leave that for instances and moves. Are the Giants even making any moves in uh, making any other moves currently in the offseason? I have no idea. But then if you go to a website like NJ.com, which, you know, heavily reports on the Giants, you have them. And this this article, by the way, that I'm looking at was made before the buffet cutting. So before the, the buffet cutting, according to NJ.com, we have around 23 point four million dollars left so you cut but but they you add on another 2.75 2.75 that's basically 26 million dollars left in cap which is still a discrepancy from the 10 million that new york post is implying and the 19 million that over the cap.com is uh giving us right here whatever the case is we either have no space left to make any more moves or we have very little space left to make moves so if we're gonna go on the optimistic side and say we have around $26 million left, we have very little space to, left to make moves. You take away 13 million uh, for the draft, you take away like 7 million for the um, in-season moves and whatnot. I mean, we're only signing depth players at this point, which uh, is really the plan that I thought they were going for anyway. I've seen names being floated out like they're like Leonard Floyd since last night. Not sure how much of a possibility that still is at this point. I know Robbie Anderson, as of recording this video, is still a free agent and the Giants are looking or might be looking to bring in another wide receiver. And Robbie Anderson is definitely somebody I'm interested in. I definitely believe we could bring him in on a cheap contract and he's a very fast speed receiver. He has a big body too, 6'3". He's definitely somebody I could see fitting in nicely with this Giants team. Maybe you could bring him, bring him in, but you're going to really have to convince him to come in on a cheap contract. Uh, Ted Karras unfortunately got signed. I don't know if you're going to sign some uh, depth players for the offensive line, which we haven't addressed yet. So I assume they're going to address it in the draft. Whatever the case is, we have little to no money left to spend if the Giants continue with their plan of, uh, you know, saving for in-season moves and saving for the draft. We have little to no money left. And if we do have any, it's going to be on uh, depth moves. But you guys let me know what you think or any other information that you could find. Because like I said, the cap situation is kind of confusing right now. Different websites reporting different things. Maybe one of you out there has the correct number and we could actually have a better discussion about it. But that's what I have for y'all for now. Maybe we'll have another video later in the day. I mean, like yesterday was absolutely crazy and the day before that. But that's it for now. I'm out. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.